Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the only show that's recommended by doctors as part of your daily, daily, daily video intake. This is the Stop Click. Hello, I am Matt Jackson. With me, as always, is Raven Reyes. Stuttering Raven Reyes. That's my title. The uh, stutterer. No, no, it's not going to have any more. All right. Okay, <laughs> we can just go with stud, I guess. Anyway, today's topic is, uh, obviously, we're hot on the heels of Avengers Assemble getting launched. We, uh, lots of cool pieces, as we can see. Uh, lots of cool pieces. Um, but today, we're going to talk about... Uh, as we get into uh, Age of Ultron storyline, the first thing that's going to be released month one is the Avengers Roundtable resource. Yes. Um, kind of ambitious uh, on this one. Um, I, I mean, I know when I saw the batteries the first time around, I thought that, with the Green Lantern batteries, that is, um, I thought that they brought uh, a lot of power to the table, and I was a little concerned that they might have been overpowered. Yeah. And then this well, looks to be a complete depart. Like, this is everywhere. This this feels like they're trying to just do everything. Yeah, it, it seems like they're definitely trying... It's multi-set. Yeah, it's multi-set. The collectability of it's insane. I mean, I mean, well, you know what? We're just going to break this down. Sure. And then we'll talk more about it sure, afterwards. Sure. With the introduction of the Infinity Gauntlet in 2012, resources have become a staple and almost a necessity to be competitive in the Heroclix scene. Up until the release of the Justice League Trinity War set, where both the Rock of Eternity and Pandora's Box were purchasable through some local retailers, resources have only been obtainable through a monthly OP event. Going back to this formula, the Age of Ultron six-month event will give us the Avengers Roundtable resource. Today we will go over the rules of this particular resource, see how it works, and talk about how the resource stacks against previous entries. First, let's talk about the point cost. Like every previous resource, the Avengers Roundtable has a variable point cost depending on the ID card resources that you attach to it. The table itself costs 5 points with 6 empty slots to attach the Avengers ID card resources at 5 points apiece. You need at least one card on the resource to use it, which gives us a minimum point value of 10 and a maximum of 35. The setup is relatively simple. Basically, you have the option to fill up each slot with an Avengers ID card resource. At setup, all the slots that are filled with cards are considered active, while the empty slots are considered inactive. In order to click the dial, you must first meet one of the requirements. When you remove an ID card from the resource using the call and help ability located on the card, you may roll a d6 and turn the dial clockwise that many times. The word may in this sentence means that it's purely optional, so if you're on a preferred click, you don't have to roll the dice. When a friendly character takes damage from an opposing attack, after actions resolve, turn the dial on the resource once clockwise. If your character took three or more damage, turn it once more a second time. Unlike the first option, this effect is mandatory, which means you have to turn the dial. Now on to scoring. Your opponent can score points from this resource in multiple ways. If you remove an ID card from the resource, your opponent scores the points of the ID card. If all ID cards are removed, your opponent scores the value of the round table. If your team is defeated, your opponent scores the total points of the round table and all ID cards attached. Now let's take a quick look at the traits and abilities of the Avengers round table. The I can help right now trait is fairly straightforward. You may use any attached ID card's call and help ability. The I'm better suited for these foes trait is definitely one of the more unique traits of any resource yet. Basically, after you reveal your force and before placing characters in your starting area, you can replace any character in your force with a character on your sideline represented by an ID card on the dial by removing the ID card. Keep in mind that this will also remove the ID card from the resource. The question here is whether or not your opponent scores the points for the card because removed, or was the removal done before points are scored. Maybe this is something WizKids can clarify for us. The call on the reservist trait is also very straightforward. At the beginning of your turn, if a crate icon is revealed and the ID slot is active and empty, you can place any ID card that you previously removed using the call and help ability. This is pretty much a recycle effect to help you get back your used ID cards. Keep in mind the two side effects of this trait. Your opponent will score the points for the card again if you move it using the call and help ability. And you will have to turn the dial clockwise, maybe causing you to lose some key abilities on the dial. Now let's go to the abilities. Like previous resources, you can only use the abilities that are described on the number that is currently showing on your dial. Number 1. Lending Moral Support. At the beginning of your turn, you may choose a friendly character, roll a d6, and use the inspiration effect of the card in the slot that corresponds to that d6 roll on that character. This is a great way to use your ID card's inspiration effects without taking them off the base. Number 2. I can't get there, but I can advise. 
the beginning of your turn, you may choose an ID card attached to the resource that you didn't use last turn, and until the end of your turn, all friendly characters can use the inspiration on that ID card. This is pretty much a more powerful version of the first ability in that instead of choosing one character to benefit from the inspiration, all of your characters can use it. On the very last click of the resource is number three, Avengers Assemble. At the beginning of your turn, give any number of friendly characters power actions. For each character given an action for this, you can remove an ID card attached to the resource and place the corresponding character adjacent to any character given the action. For the rest of the game, these characters are no longer ID characters, can't ignore pushing damage, and returns to your sidelines when they take damage. This ability has the potential to completely change the tide of battle for you, but keep in mind a few things about this ability. Your opponent will score points for any card removed from your resource and will also score your resource if you choose to remove all the ID cards. Also, because your figures return to the sidelines after taking damage instead of being KO'd, your opponent will not score the points of the figures that come in from the resource dial. This has been our look at the Avengers Roundtable. This resource is slated to be available to anyone participating in the first month of the Avengers Age of Ultron OP event this summer. So if you're wanting to get your hands on this, be sure to call up your local game store, or if you're in the Coppell area of Texas, stop by Roto Play and reserve your spot as seating will definitely be limited. So Matt, what do you think about the description of the card? Pretty interesting. I'm 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 am really stoked about what this can bring to the table. Um, as far as variants goes, I think a lot of times when we talk about resources and the things they did, they all kind of did the same thing. Once you saw a utility belt used one time, you kind of saw how it was going to work every single time. I think I don't really think I saw too many people play the utility belt in a different manner. It was yeah. all kind of the same. I, I do the prep time thing, I get it to the click I want, I get my plus two stats, I just, I smash your face. And uh, I think that was, I mean, a little bit to its detriment. You kind of, uh, I think they expanded their horizons when they saw the batteries. The batteries you can bring a lot to the table. We still don't see an incredible amount of variance in it. Uh, either A, we see a ton of constructs on a battery, and the constructs are merely well, used to, yeah. like for the red battery. I, I the red think, battery, you always see the cheapest I think what you're ones. trying to say is, this one's a lot less static. Than oh the yeah, other ones. It's way more versatile. It's a lot more unpredictable. It's really the first thing I noticed about this and its abilities. It's really hard to counter build against. You can't. Like, you, you can't <laughs> counter build because you can generally counter build against the red battery. You know, yeah, yeah. use the silver centurion yeah. or anything. You know, you can generally counter build re, uh, engineer. resources. Engineer, can, engineer, engineer can do it. You know, yeah. um, run characters that don't need free actions for the green battery yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just this one you can't. <laughs> You can't build against it because you don't know what they're bringing to yeah. it with 52 different ID cards. 58, I think. 58. Now, these are the ID cards. I don't know if you've seen them or not. The coolest thing about them is how they feel. They're yeah. like a credit card. It know? is. It's really they, solid. They, they look good. They feel good. I, I feel, really I, like it. Yeah. Probably one of my favorite resources. So far, yeah. As far yeah, as static-wise. Yeah. I, I feel like I, the, as far as a relic goes, I really think that they, they're, they're, they're different enough that it's something brand new, and I feel like they can expand upon this this idea as they go yes, along. Yes, it's something that that can definitely be refreshed. Yeah, and then yeah, you know, you know, I mean, obviously, it might might, might be a little de detrimental to have you know, uh, you know fifty eight Avengers cards, and then we're just gonna go to the DC universe and just have everybody who's ever part of the Justice League ever, and well, they can drop in their cards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it might, well, might, be might weird because they named it Avengers Roundtable. Yeah, I understand. But um, see Batman sitting at the Avengers so Roundtable. So in, in in high level play, um, the thing that obviously cracks me up a little bit about the resource is the ability to go I'm better suited to these foes so we both reveal and we both get to to place now if you actually have two before people placing characters. before placing characters we can actually see that what your opponent's going to play and if he's playing the Avengers round table you can swap and then he can swap to match what you swap like he can actually counter like he can swap out his characters well, to here, handle here, the characters here's, here's the issue with this and I, what's up oh five minutes sorry <laughs> So here's the issue. Our, 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 our very humble director back there, Charles. Yes. He's so happy. <laughs> we gotta. He's so happy to be a part of this. Anyway, hey, how's it going? <laughs> but um, here's the thing I noticed about this, and mm -hmm. the thing that might kind of stifle what you're thinking. It says give a character. Is it a character? Yeah, a character. You may replace a friendly character. It's so only it's, one. Yeah, it's only okay. one. It's not multiple. Okay. Not as broken as we initially thought, because if you could replace your entire team, <laughs> that would be stupid. That would be. I, I think it'd be funny. Yeah. I'll get up. But, but anyway. once again, that gives you. It's a pocket knife at that point. This resource is a pocket knife. It gives you the perfect tool for the job just with that ability. Yeah. You see entire roll of super senses. You have your precision strike guy ready. You see entire field of shape change. 
you know you've got one character with battle fear ready to go. Yeah. So we've got we've got a very solid handle on how we're gonna pull these in. Obviously, inspiration abilities. I think uh, every character when they bring in, they they have their inspiration, the thing they trigger. Yes. Uh, obviously, some of them are more useful than others. Obviously, modify attack value by plus one. Very generic. Nice perplex, and we can just go. We can just yeah. modify attack value. That's and, Black Widow. Yeah, that's Black Widow. So, um, well, before we go any further, we gotta do have to let you know that. The second you use a card from the call in help, they immediately score five points. Yeah, it happens. Because that's the cost <laughs> of the card. Yeah. And you can no longer use the card while it's not on the dial. Oh, so yeah. that, that, that gives it a, a sense of expendability, meaning that it, it's finite. It's, it's, it's a one shot. It's Resources one-shot. are a little bit finite, which makes you think about think more about playing your, planning your next move. Yeah. You, you don't want to waste a Hellcat, which gives a modified attack value by plus two against when, when making close combat attacks. That's a really good ability. Yeah. So you want to make sure you save it. But then that's when calling the reservists come in. Mm-hmm. When you land on that special power, the supply crate, um, you can replace any empty slot on your resource. That with, you've already used. Yeah, with a card that you've already used for the turn. Mm-hmm. So I use Hellcat. I click on that. I can put Hellcat back on for future use, yeah. which is awesome because, mm-hmm. once again, that kind of forces your opponent to play differently. Yeah. And also, if you'll notice that I can't be, I can't be there, but... Uh, I can advise being able to share just you know plus two attack for your whole yeah. team. Yeah, that ability. That's that's a little on the broken side. Well, we'll get, yeah, that's um, <laughs> very that's, very good. That's a number two. Yeah. That's later on in the click. Sure. Once they click on it, but once again, like he said, yeah, you give them plus two against all close combat attacks. Mm-hmm. That's Pretty awesome. Nice. And the cool thing is, is. It does not use the card. No, no. It, it's just literally it stays it's on the sharing, like, like, yeah. uh, uh, similar to sharing a construct on the Green Lantern batteries. So, obviously, we, we, we've seen a lot of these cards come out. I, I really do. I really, I mean, I'm, I'm excited about Age of Ultron. However, we as, as we just barely got to see it, like, one, one side has it up so far, is the Quinjet does very interesting things, very similarly to this, to this resource. It calls in Avengers. It's a 200-point it's a figure. It sits on the board. But it has very similar... Uh, effects. It also messes with the cards. When we get to, when we get to that point, when we get the yeah. full dial spold, we're going to talk about that. So um, we're kind of excited uh, excited there. Let's go over these other two abilities real quick. Sure. Um, lending moral support. It's basically like the second ability, mm-hmm. except it's only one character. So one character, you roll a d6, and you get to use the ID card inspiration mm-hmm. on that slot. Yeah. Kind of like the bat belt where you use the ability yeah. without actually using the yeah, resource. Yeah. And now my favorite one, and I think this is the coolest one ever, is the third ability, which is Avengers Assemble. Now, what this does... Oh, jeez, what doesn't it do? <laughs> drops, so, wait, drops the field. Yeah, for every action you give your team, your character, your characters on your team, uh, one action per character, of course, you pick an ID card from your resource, and you put that character on the field. It no longer... Um, is actually, this brings up something that we didn't even talk about. The way the call and help works. Mm-hmm. The way the call and help works is you remove the... ID from the card and you put that character yeah. on the field next to that. Next opponent. to the character who gave him, who got, who got and the action. And then the inspiration triggers. Yeah. So they go away at the end of the turn, right? Uh, they do go away at the end of the action. Oh, at the end of the action. So soon, so you bring in, for example, Hellcat. Yeah. Hellcat comes into King Thor needed Hellcat. Why? I don't know. Um, with a plus two attack, bro. <laughs> with a plus two attack, obviously. Yeah, I mean, 12 um, attack isn't so enough King, anymore. King, King Thor brings in Hellcat. King Thor gets a power action. Hellcat now goes. Hellcat does her thing as soon as her action resolves. Whether she hits somebody, whether she moves, or just, just to perplex, she, she gets to do one thing and then she goes away. Now, the cool thing about Avengers Assemble is they don't go away. They all stay on the field, but there are some downsides to it in the fact that your characters can't ignore pushing damage, the ones that you call in, of course, and they go back to your sideline if they take damage. Yeah. From anything. So, so yeah. if they push, they go to the sideline. Now, what it doesn't they actually take, say is, uh, do they score the points, the full point value of the character? No, because you return them to your sideline. You return them to the sideline. Okay. So, yeah. so they don't actually score the points for it. Yeah, so they, don't, they, they just go back to your sideline. They're not a part of, part of the point total or anything, which is awesome because you can, you know, yeah. first, most come, devious. Come from behind. Well, yeah. no, not even that. The most devious thing I can think <laughs> of, especially in high-end tournaments, mm-hmm. is use this to go to time. Use this to go to time? <laughs> use could. this to, to, to call them in, move them up to, to, to tangle up the guys. Yeah, there you go. They can't move. They can't make any range common attacks. Yeah. And then at that time, yeah. you know, when time is called, that's it. Yeah, you're, you, you swarm their team with uh, with lots and lots of damage. That's, that's disgusting. Um, as far as going against other resources and relics, mm-hmm. I honestly would use this. 
Um, as, as vari- variety is a spice of life. In yes. this case, I- I'm all on board for this relic. I really can't wait to play test it, see how it works. I do think it does have one small drawback compared to batteries, and that is the batteries didn't use up your character for a turn. I, I kind of yeah. feel like that's but the balance. Out. I think the reason they did that is because of the green battery. Because if it was just one free action, yeah, then the green battery would shut them down. Yeah, you're, you're they did correct. that to combat the green battery. And um, honestly, I think this is going to be the most abused resource yet. Abused? You think you think it's actually going to get abused in high level play? Yeah, I think honestly, I think it's because we don't we don't know. See, this yeah. is it. You know, no yeah, pun no. intended. This is, these are the wild cards here. Yeah, there you go. You know, this is this is your utility knife to anything. Yeah. You know, it's not static, so yeah. you can't counter build against it. The only thing you can do is just make sure you bring what you think is the best suited adventures. Yeah. For your lots, style. lots, and lots of knowing what characters to bring and preparing well. Um, this is definitely the dial for the overprepared. Yes. So uh, we're we're looking forward to seeing all what people bring to the the meta for it. Uh, obviously, some people are kind of tired of some of some, of some relics already. Yeah. Um, and then uh, we'll just see how it pans out. Okay. In closing, one through ten, what do you give it? And will you play it? I'm definitely going to play it. I'm definitely going to play it. Are you going to play it in meta? Meta, we'll see. We'll see. Um, Obviously, they still have got entities to compete with. Uh, That's kind of crazy. We've still got batteries running around. I'm I'm not sure that this thing is going to see massive play until someone figures out how to overcome entities for the same amount of points because that's really what we're trading out here. Can you you run both? Uh, Can you run one or two? Um, I mean, obviously, as we saw in high-level play, we saw the, 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 the dupe. Uh, yeah. Gluttony team um, with, the red with, 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 with the red red battery and just how unbelievably awful people got destroyed by that thing. Um, so do, what do I think? I, I hope we really see some amazing things out of it. I, I do expect it, but most of all, this looks like to me the most fun resource yet. So by one, one through ten, one through ten, I'm going to go straight nine right now. Straight nine. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. I myself am probably going to give it probably a nine as well. Yeah. Uh, mostly because. It's not as accessible as other. It's a lot of, collect, lot of collecting lot. involved, and that's what I think is going to really determine how it's used. Yeah. Either you're going to be a collector about it, yeah. and you're gonna you're gonna find all the game breaking cards for it, or you're not, and you're gonna miss out, and it's just gonna be sitting there collecting dust. Yeah. And I, I honestly believe it's real easy to get left behind. It is, especially with convention using. exclusive cards. I, I was that was actually the part I was most disappointed about. Was well, they had to go to convention exclusive pieces for yeah. the thing. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's our prediction. I think honestly, we'll see it in meta play. Um, I, can't, I hope so. I can't wait to get my hands on it, man. There you Month go. one starts Here in we August. Go. Here right? we go. That's the next couple of months, dude. I can't Summer. wait. Yes, that's awesome. Um, that's been the stop click. I've been Raven. I'm MJ, and thank you for watching.